Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson. Tonight she is back, despite being rejected by the American electorate, in two separate presidential contests. Hillary Clinton is looking to reestablish herself in politics. First off, she publicly blamed James Comey and the media for her defeat, thereby sending the message to loyalists that she didn't really lose at all. I was on the way to winning until the combination of Jim Comey's letter on October 28th and Russian WikiLeaks raised doubts in the minds of people who were inclined to vote for me but got scared off. Well, her countless fans in the media, including the one you saw interviewing her in that last clip, lapped this up and cheered on her return to the scene. I found this to be perhaps the most astonishing Hillary Clinton appearance I've ever seen. It was, uh, it was perhaps her at her most authentic. I think what Jim Comey did was to throw overboard uh, Justice Department procedures because of political reasons, his own internal politics because of the hatred for Hillary Clinton within the FBI. 20% of people voted because of racism. And I think after eight years of a black president, there was no way that this woman Who was going elected? to win. Ah, oh, they live in an irony-free world. All that gushing, but it's not surprising if you've been following it. Remember any of these New York Times headlines from the days right before the election? On the Hillary side, here's one. Hillary Clinton sees ugliness and joy in race's closing days. And this, big names campaigning for Hillary Clinton underscore Donald Trump's isolation. Yeah, he could never win. For Trump, how about this one? Donald Trump's moments and missteps, a look back, or black voters aghast at Trump find a place of food and comfort. But wait, didn't Trump get a higher percentage of the African-American vote than Mitt Romney did? So maybe the press didn't actually know what they were talking about. Maybe they still don't. Either way, it's hard to argue they were rooting for Donald Trump to become president, and yet many Hillary fans disagree with that. Peter Dow, for example, was an advisor to Hillary's 2008 presidential campaign, and he joins us tonight. Peter, thanks a lot for coming on. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. I, d I don't doubt that the Comey announcement had an effect on the election. I thought that at the time. But the press was foursquare for Hillary Clinton from the moment Donald Trump got the nomination. They didn't hide it at all. And the emails that were leaked from John Podesta's Gmail account proved they were collaborating with the Hillary campaign. So there's not really much of an argument to make, do you think, that the press was on Trump's side? Look, a conservative is going to say that the, the mainstream media was against <laughs> Donald Trump, President Trump, and liberals, progressives, Democrats are going to say that they were against Hillary Clinton. But the fact is there have been independent studies that were done. Harvard Shorenstein Center did one. And look, both candidates got very bad press. You know, candidate Trump got terrible press, and Hillary Clinton got very bad press. One thing that was profoundly different, though, on the email story specifically, we counted 600 days out of research team, 600 consecutive days of coverage that far, far outweighed any coverage of any other Trump story. So really? where, where was that? Where was that coverage? Was that in the New York Times and the Washington Post? Oh, no, well, it wasn't. It was on, on, no, it wasn't. I, I, I ran one of those news organizations at the time. Major and it was papers. not in the No, that's not true. Well, New York Times did not run 600 days of email stories. Well, Gallup actually, Tucker, Gallup, uh -huh. had, <clears throat> Gallup had an analysis that said that the only thing that voters heard when they heard Hillary Clinton's name uh -huh. was email. Yeah. Um, there well, was a word cloud where the word email was larger than every single other word. So, yeah. look, the email okay. story dominated coverage from the very beginning. It was yeah. something no, that she made a mistake and on, she apologized on, on for the it. Right, on the right it did, but not uh, in the New York Times, not in the Washington Post. Instead, the New York Times wrote pieces like this. Here's a piece by Michael Barbero, three days before the election. Hillary Clinton at a campaign rally, and I'm quoting this now. This is like a prose poem. It's erotic in its intensity. Quote, her arms thrust skyward one after another in what starts to feel like a dance. There's an unfamiliar sense of abandon and joy. The rain grows heavier. Her wet clothes turn a shade darker. She cracks a wide smile. She takes in the scene around her and laughs before she finishes her, her sentence. I could go on, but I'm, ooh, I'm getting, <clears throat> I'm feeling creepy about it. Meanwhile, same day, mm -hmm. I won't go on, but the headline in the Times was, Thin line splits Donald Trump's politics and business. Trump is a villain. Hillary is a hero. That was a storyline in every major media organization in America. You well, were there. Well I, just, well, I dispute that completely. Look, you can cherry pick stories that were positive for cherry her picking. Or, or negative against him. Look, at the end of the day, the overall narrative in the mainstream media, and my issue has been with the New York Times, the Washington Post, and, and, and other networks. There was analysis done of the major network coverage, the three nightly news coverage, six to one ratio of email coverage over her policies. So how can voters decide? Look, Donald Trump won the election. He's a legitimate president. I've always said that. This is not right. about 
having Hillary Clinton become president. This is about telling the truth of what happened. Okay. Here's, let me, let me just say this. The truth, I mean, I'm just, these independent yeah. studies are done by political hacks posing as journalists. The Shorenstein Center, I mean, let's be, t I am a journalist. I, I sort of know the people who work there. And yeah. you're not going to tell me, because again, I know them, that they're politically independent because they're not. They were as horrified as Martha Raddatz was when she cried on television at Trump's victory. Well, These people you, don't like Trump. I mean, I'm, that's true. Well, let me give you, let me give you a, a narrative, sort of a framework that tied through everything, and a lot of people right. fell into this trap. I think it was the basic narrative of the race, that Donald Trump was somehow this terribly weak candidate. You know, he came down that es escalator. Everybody was mocking him, laughing right. at him. Actually, I tweeted the next day, take this guy seriously. So from the very beginning, well, I thought he was a Well, you were a lot smarter than most on that. I mean, you're right. I think you're absolutely right there. He was not taking seriously at first by the press. They liked him because they thought it was a sideshow, it was interesting, and he divided a pretty strong Republican field. But when it became clear that he had some remote chance of winning, I mean, they piled on. And look, the guys who covered this campaign for the New York Times, for example, we don't need to guess what they thought. They wrote it. This is right after the election. Michael Barbero, who covered this as a New York Times reporter, mm -hmm. quote, we had fearless journalism throughout 2016. Voters wanted what they wanted. In other words, we tried our best to keep this guy from becoming president. They voted for him anyway. Like, yeah, but, but, is I, it you know, I don't want to. Yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to litigate. Uh, you know, Mike Barbero, New York Times. But what I was going to finish my point on, okay. on the coverage is that the premise was he was such a terrible candidate that if Hillary Clinton didn't win by 20 points, she's somehow a total failure and should go away and do an apology tour. The fact is, he eviscerated a field of 17 Republicans. This guy yeah, was I very agree. tough to beat. And yes. the fact that Hillary Clinton made history. This is a country based on fairness. We celebrate the people who have had great accomplishments. Hillary Clinton was the first woman ever in American history to win the nomination. And now you have people yelling at her, you know, go away, shut up, apologize. As far as I'm concerned, it was a contest of two very strong candidates. They both made mistakes. And at the end of the day, he became the president through our Constitution. He's the president okay. based on our Constitution. Okay, I mean, I, I agree with a lot of what you said. I just, it, it, it grates to hear the press described as anything but what they were, which was much more in favor of Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump. They are horrified by Trump. He doesn't like them either, by the way. He attacks them directly and they take it personally. But they really wanted her to win. They may not have liked her personally. I don't think a lot of them did. But they wanted her to win. That's just true. Uh, it, it's, 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 look, it's what you're stating. I, I see it the exact opposite. As I say, that six to one study of emails over issues. I mean, there are a lot, the playing field was tilted against her unfairly. And again, this is not about relitigating. This is about just telling the truth. Did, Hillary did, Clinton you think, did not face a fair playing field, Tucker. That's just a fact. That I mean, is, it's so interesting. I've, obviously, I was at the newspaper in Arkansas 25 years ago. So I've, I've watched the Clintons carefully for a long time. Have you noticed a, a continuity of storyline here? Like, they always make the case. Her husband does the same. We're being treated unfairly. We're the victims of some kind of bias. People are mean to us for reasons we can't explain. Have you noticed this? They always Look, say I, I, I wasn't there. So I'm talking about this particular election that I covered very carefully. And the fact is, you know, there were two candidates under investigation, but the public only thought one was. And again, as I say, two formidable candidates fighting one another. One ended up being president, but the, the, le the playing field was not level for Hillary Clinton. Okay, J just in point of fact, I don't think we even know at this date right now that Donald Trump has been the subject of an FBI investigation, but his campaign and the people around him. Do we know something different from that? I'm just saying, saying what I've heard from FBI Director Comey and his testimony and what the intelligence community has said. I don't know anything more than what I've heard publicly. But from what we've heard publicly, there was confirmation that there's an investigation. And look, On him I, personally, I've also I don't know look, if that's true. I've also tweeted that I don't think it's going to, to take him down as many people, I think, on the Democratic side believe. Yeah, well, they, they, should, they should listen to you, Peter. Thanks a lot for coming on. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, Dave,